Welcome to this Studio 5 special report. We're turning an entertainment spotlight on black men and mental health, bringing you real stories, information, and guidance to overcome. Welcome to Studio 5. At the end of our show each week, I ask you to take a moment to uplift someone around you, and that is my aim this week in a serious and personal way taking a closer look at black men and mental health. Some would say we are in a crisis. Studies show African-American men who neglect their mental health are more vulnerable to drug abuse, alcohol use, homelessness, incarceration, homicide, and suicide. We've seen high profile cases in the entertainment industry, like The Ellen Show's Stephen Twitch boss and master chef contender, Josh Marks. These lives and losses touched me deeply. Stephen Boss was known to millions as simply Twitch. He was a dancer, actor, and television producer. And he competed in Star Search, and so you think you can dance. Before becoming the dancer, DJ, and an executive producer for The Ellen DeGeneres Show. My favorite dancer, Twitch, everybody. <laughs> From the outside, many believed he had it all. A great career, a growing family, and a glowing personality that lit up the room. But at age 40, Twitch shot himself, shocking his fans and family, a wife and three children. Then there was Chef Joshua Marks, a seven foot, two inches tall man with even taller dreams, becoming a master chef and a breakout star on season three of Gordon Ramsay's long-running hit reality cooking competition. He finished second, ahead of thousands. Josh, a 24-year-old army contract specialist from Jackson, Mississippi. He shot into this competition, bursting with confidence. How would you rate that out of 10? I will rate it 10 and a half. A gentle giant fulfilling his dreams. He later suffered a series of panic attacks and strange behavior. Doctors diagnosed him bipolar. Songs unto the Lord, or, or, or. Songs unto the Lord, or, or, or. Songs unto the Lord, or, or, or. Joshua Marks committed suicide at age 26. Chef Marks and Twitch, just two of many black men, suffering in silence. We begin this special report with Anthony Evans. The singer and songwriter has a timely project called Revive. In his music, his books, and our conversations, Anthony talks honestly about his mental health struggles. We sat down with him while on tour in Nashville, Tennessee. got a new single out yes. that's sort of introducing us to the new project, yes. even if it's the new song. Uh, I remember when I first heard just the first lyrics in it. Tell me the message, what happened? The message, actually, when you mentioned those, the first line of the song, mm -hmm. which is, I'm being honest, this is the hardest song my heart will have to sing. I'm being honest, this is the hardest. The hardest song my heart will sing. Even if is a song that was birthed out of the loss of our mom. Dream is stolen. How do I say what I don't mean? And there came a point in my life, in my career, where I had to make a decision. Do you really, at this point, with, with, the, with the new level of things that are going wrong in life, do you believe what you are singing? Mm -hmm. And I, it was, it was, that's why it was the hardest song my heart had to sing because I made a choice that God, you have tragically and taken some people from our lives, including our mother, and I'm still going to worship you in spite of that. But that was not an easy, so easy conclusion to come to. Mm -hmm. So that's, the song is, is about not just loss, but a lot of us have our grief scenarios. I was just talking to a friend of mine who got a message from her husband that he's like, I'm out of here I, after 23 years. And that's her even if. She's like, God, even if this is not restored the way I see it, will I still worship you? So 
that's that's the the new the new song. All of us have an even if scenario, and I wanted to kind of approach this album and new singles as honestly as I as I can. As I stand here, I will sing because you are good to me. One of the things you say in the song that's true for me, and I think for so many people. I'll sing this until I believe it. Yes. I, I actually don't believe what I'm saying. A hundred percent. My dad has really coached me through a lot of dealing with emotions. Like emotions are indicators, they're beautiful, they're a gift, but if they lead, then you're gonna be derailed constantly. So he, a lot of times he says, walk in the direction of the truth and your feelings will follow your feet. Keep singing until you believe. That's, that's the bottom line. So there are moments where, you know, for us specifically in that loss, where we were like, I'm gonna believe that God is good. And it's kind of like, I, I don't right now, but I'm gonna just, just do what I can and let him do what I can't. And the new project is called Revive. Mm -hmm. Yes. Why that? The album's called Revive because I've, I've taken steps in my life via, via therapy, which I had to go. I mean, after all this stuff, I was like, I'm about to lose it. Like it's it's too much. It was, and we all have those points in life where it's just too much, you know. And I had to make a decision: Am I going to allow this too much to to take me down, or am I going to do what I can? And and there were moments where all I had was it took everything in me to sit down with my therapist and talk through this stuff. I mean, I was just like, I don't want to talk anymore. I don't. But I would have those moments, and then God would like magnify those moments. He he would take my effort and multiply it. You always saw the best in me. You're always there when I'm in need. Would this be the first album without your mom present? Yes. Which, it, yeah, it just feels crazy. It feels crazy because the, the, um, the weight and the intention behind what I'm doing has drastically changed because she was the one that said, you have a very special voice and a, and a gifting that you should be using back when I was 12. You know, it, it, it really does hit deeper. This is my thank you. talk a lot openly about as you did today uh, and I want to talk as mm -hmm. a black man to a black man yeah. how important is mental health and therapy it seems like we're only just now yeah, beginning just to realize now. like we are also in a crisis we yeah we need to talk we need to do yeah. I think it's one of the most impo important things one of the most important things, period, as related to culture, but especially in African-American culture, because sometimes it can be like, no, uh, it'll be, it's a harder stance against it. Mm -hmm. But the, the change that we need to see in our culture in general, to me, comes from you being not only healthy spiritually, but mental health and spiritual health and emotional health are all tied together. And for some of us, reading Be Anxious for Nothing is not enough. You need tools on how to be anxious for nothing, or tools on how to forgive, or tools on how to love correctly, or tools on how to undo trauma. Like when I admitted that I needed help, that's how I didn't fail, was admitting that I need the help. Was it hard to get to that point where you realize I need, this isn't good? Yeah, because I let myself, I had to get almost to the point of a breakdown to admit that. So yes, that was hard because that wasn't necessary. But there's something in our culture and in faith culture even that goes like, uh, no, like pray, pray harder. I'm like, that's not always wise counsel is also mentioned in scripture. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Like, so that I, yes, it, it was hard because it didn't, I didn't have to go that far to figure it out. And now I want through the music or through the, the book, When Faith Meets Therapy, I want people to not have to go to the point of a breakdown to figure out they need help. I've tasted and seen you're good to me. You can read more on Anthony's journey in his book, When Faith Meets Therapy. He also has a memoir, Unexpected Places, Thoughts on God, Faith, and Finding Your Voice. Both are available wherever you get your reading material. His album, Revive, is also available right now wherever you stream or download your music. When our Studio 5 special, Black Men and Mental Health, continues. What makes you so open about your mental 
health struggles? Because I, I know what it's like, you know, to suffer in silence. I went through a horrific kind of mental health journey and it's something that I always have to manage for the rest of my life. Hip hop artist Lecrae talks about his battles off stage, depression, anxiety, and alcohol. Welcome back to this special edition of Studio 5. We're turning the spotlight on black men and mental health with the help of incredible voices in the entertainment industry. Hip hop artist Lecrae has been open about his battles with anxiety, depression, alcohol, drugs, and the work it takes to deal with each of them. We traveled to North Carolina to sit down with him backstage while on tour. Still in America, yeah. beautiful, elegant, simple, and arrogant. Congratulations on winning two additional Grammys, so you, you double your, your shelf population. <laughs> <laughs> Is this any different than the previous two? Is there something different about these two? Much different. How so? Oof, where do you begin? <laughs> um, these were unexpected. <laughs> I just want to give my daughter a wonderful time oh. and bring her to the Grammys. I just want the ultimate daddy-daughter day. And God is just kind. I did not expect to be up here, okay? Uh, let me just say this. First of all, how y'all doing? Y'all look amazing. What was it like for your daughter? I'm a girl dad just like you. What was it like for her and for you to see her on stage with you? Uh, I, I, I held back some tears a couple times because, you know, I didn't grow up with my dad. And so, um, God, huh. uh, all I ever wanted to be was the father I never had, um, just to be present and to be able to give them experiences and for them to know they're loved and thought of. So being able to do that for her was just a very, uh, it was a just a very precious moment. The imprint of God is on each and every one of y'all's lives. Whether you take home an award or not, you are fearfully and wonderfully made and you made this music not to win an award, but to impact the world with the gift that God has put in you. You shouted out your wife, and I heard you say that you guys have been married, what, 17, 18 years yeah. now? The first 10, not pretty? Not pretty. But these pretty. last seven? Last seven, been, much better. What's the difference? Therapy. Mm. Sincerely, therapy. Uh, a lot of times you, you don't realize you marry one person, but there are five people over the course of your marriage. And if, if you don't know how to move and adjust and adapt to this person who they're becoming or who you're becoming, you, you miss each other, you go different ways. And if you don't learn how to talk through that, you both live on an island and now you're just roommates and you're wondering, why are we still together? Oh, it must be for the kids. Well, guess what happens when the kids move out? Y'all split up. So if you, we had to find our bond and our connectivity in a new season where we were changing, where we were different. I had to grow up and be a leader. And not just like put my foot down as leader, but lead in humility, lead in love, lead in grace, lead in, you know, I'm the one saying, all right, let's do therapy, you know? So I think that's a big piece of it. What makes you so open about your mental health struggles? Because I, I know what it's like, you know, to suffer in silence. I went through a horrific kind of mental health journey and it's something that I always have to manage for the rest of my life. And I think people need to know that folks who have successful careers, who have families, um, wrestle just like they do. And so for me, I want people to know like, this is something you can do and you can push through, whether it's depression, anxiety, whatever neurological disorders you may be wrestling with, um, you can push through. What do you think is happening? These celebrities who seemingly have it all yeah. and are bringing light to people. Yeah. And Well, that's part of the reason why there's more silence is because there's this idea that, well, I've got it all together, so I, I can't let the world see my vulnerability. Mm -hmm. um, it's like a cycle, right? The cycle of being vulnerable, having your vulnerability mocked, right? Because mm -hmm. it's like, oh man, I'm really struggling, I'm depressed. What are you talking about? You're depressed. You got all this stuff going for you. So then comes 
anger, which is like an expression of sadness in a lot of ways. And that anger may lead you to do something reckless. And then sadness from your reckless decision, right? Maybe. And then more, then, then you settle into that depression. And then you're like, what's the point? And so I think if you don't experience support, then you won't know that it's okay to not be okay. And my support has come in the form of close friends and a godly therapist, mm -hmm. um, who, and my wife, my God, who allow me to process those things internally so I can heal externally instead of just standing in front of the world all the time like, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good, and then going to my room and I'm like, I'm not good. Mm -hmm. um, so that's, that's part of the issue. And it, obviously in a black community, we are just turning a corner on destigmatizing mental health. Boy, ain't nothing wrong with you. Mm -hmm. You know, grandma used to say my nerves are bad. Well, now we know what that means. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, yeah, talking yeah. about anxiety, mm -hmm. but we didn't have the language for it. You know, I just got a case of the blues. That's depression. You know, these mm -hmm. are neurological disorders that we need to address in our communities. You can read more about Lecrae's story by purchasing his two memoirs, Unashamed and I Am Restored. You can also check out his candid conversations online in his show, The Deep End. Still ahead in this Studio 5 special report. Take me back to that moment. Was it the, the suicide attempt? Yeah, I, I think the rock bottom moment was, you know, being under the bed, you know, when my godmother came in the room. Mm -hmm. I've been missing for all day. Former Green Bay Packer Jay Barnett once contemplated suicide. See how his journey to stay alive is now helping other men to live and win in the game of life. Welcome back to this week's Studio 5 as we take a closer look at black men and mental health. Dr. Jay Barnett is a former professional football player now focused on helping others. The marriage and family therapist, speaker, and author knows firsthand what it means to contemplate suicide and to struggle to find peace to live fully. He traveled to our studio here in Virginia Beach to share his story and deliver a healthy dose of hope. The basic question for me is how do we go from football to therapy, if you will? Where does that transition for you in terms of your life? What happened? I, I think the nexus to uh, going from football to uh, therapy was really the defining moments that I had overlooked the majority mm -hmm. of my life. Wow. Uh, when my parents divorced at 13. And when that happened, I, I just, you know, did what I think every young black boy does when he doesn't have a father, mm -hmm. is you go to uh, the closest, you know, place for you. And for me, it was, you know, the, the football field. Not realizing that I was struggling with depression, mm -hmm. as many of us do as men. We hide in places where no one would see us, mm -hmm. but also we're being seen in some capacity. It wasn't until after uh, the second suicide attempt that I had that I really began to say, okay, I, I need to get some help. Um, but the therapy was the catalyst that would really bring so many changes to my life because at 30 years old, here I was sitting in this white man's office and he asked me, how did I feel? And I had no clue of what that meant. No one had ever asked. What was the rock bottom point? Was it, take me back to that moment? Was it a, the suicide attempt? Yeah, I, I think the rock bottom moment was, you know, being under the bed, you know, when my godmother came in the room. Because mm -hmm. I'd been missing for <laughs> all day. Mm -hmm. And, um, and um, I had taken, you know, so many pills. This is where I was, and, and, and this is, is for somebody. I was in so much pain, I didn't care why I ended up. And when you think about suicide, when we've studied individuals who have died by way of suicide, when you listen to the patterns of what they're saying and listen to 
their thoughts. I, it's very calculated. Mm -hmm. And when people says, well, I, I can't believe he did this. Like, oh, he's been thinking about this for a while. She's been thinking about that for a while. Today was just today. How about the moment of conversation with God? Because obviously there's been a spiritual awakening for you as well since. Yeah. What happened? He said, you got to trust me, Jay. And, um, and I'm in tears and I'm, I'm just sitting there and I mean, this, this presence is just so strong. I can't stop crying. Mm -hmm. And he says, I promise you, I will use all of it. He said, there's a great purpose and a great call that I had on your life. And I just remember crying and said, God, why me? And something in me was so convinced that the promise sounds so much greater than the pain. And, and trusting him was not easy because it was me saying, I have to surrender. When it comes to talking about mental health um, and doing the work that you've done and that you're continuing to help others do, what advice would you give, especially to black men, um, with dealing with our stuff? Yeah. What should, why is this important? Yeah, it's important for us as black men because uh, we've been bred to feel that, you know, we're just machines. I mean, you take it all the way back to slavery. I mean, you look at, uh, you know, the different systems that were put in place. So historically, as black men, there hasn't been anything in place that has focused on our mental and psychological, emotional well-being. And so it's important that we continue to not only just have conversation, but black men like us are seen. Yeah. How do they begin to navigate the steps of, okay, I've never been to therapy. I don't even know what a therapist is. Where do I begin this process of getting the help I need? Yeah. Step one is identifying where it hurts. Identify where you can see where the changes begin or where the change happened. Number two, is find a trusted space with somebody that has already earned your trust. Mm -hmm. And number three, giving yourself the permission to explore, permission to feel. And those are the three steps that I think mm -hmm. that can begin. Now, if those three steps lead you to therapy, great. But these are three steps that you could start on your own. And to the brothers that are watching, you have to sit still. So your soul, your body and your spirit can all come in alignment to begin to deal with those things. Dr. Jay Barnett is the author of several books, including Hello King. You can purchase his books wherever you get your reading material. Welcome back. You're watching Studio 5, a special edition. You know, music helps us to bring you this show every single week. And this week's soundtrack comes from Jonathan McReynolds and Marvin Winans. Take a listen, and you'll hear why Abel is what's playing in my ear this week. It's a great reminder in this Studio 5 special report. Time and time again you prove I can always count on you. Again, you are more than able. Ain't no problem that's too hard for a strong and mighty God. Yes, you're able, you're more than able. Time and time again, you prove we can always count on you you're able. On that musical note, we've got time for just one more word, the final word. We want to give that to Anthony Evans. The uniqueness and the differences in you that you now feel either ashamed of or you feel um, like that make you the odd man out will ultimately make you the, it, it will play a beautiful and wildly important part in the unique man that God's called you to be. Anthony, thank you. That is a great final word for this Studio 5 special report. Until next time, I'll end as I began this week, encouraging you to make time to uplift someone around you. And then please come on back and see where Studio 5 takes you next week. 
Bye bye. Thank you for watching. God bless. If you or someone you know is struggling with a mental health crisis, there is help available. Please call the Suicide and Crisis Lifeline by simply dialing 988.